Time Bends is the title of Arthur Miller's just published autobiography. And Time Bends is a strangely appropriate way to characterize the course of the life of this preeminent American playwright. Because over his 72 years, his life and times have bent in and out of the bitter depression years, in and out of immense professional acclaim, in and out of two failed marriages and into a long fine one, in and out of political controversy and in and out of fashion in the fickle world of American letters. You wrote Death of a Salesman when you were 33 years old. How long did it take you? Uh, well, the first act, more or less, was a matter of one day and a night. Uh, I then rested and <laughs> worked about six weeks on the second act and put the whole thing together. But, uh, of course, there's a lifetime in that play. Death of a Salesman was a triumph for Arthur Miller. It won him both the Pulitzer Prize and the New York Drama Critics Award. The critics were comparing him to Henrik Ibsen and Eugene O'Neill. You inevitably begin to feel a kind of impact of power, which is sexual, it is financial, it is everything. You begin to shift and change, if you're not careful, which I wasn't. People now were talking to me differently. Women, men, they were looking at me like an icon of some kind. Arthur Miller came a long way for a Jewish boy born in Harlem and raised in Brooklyn. He was the son of an immigrant coat manufacturer, a man who couldn't read English. His father lost everything in the crash of 1929, and so Miller grew up a child of the Depression, and that was to show in his writing and his politics. He had to work and save for two years before he could afford to go to the University of Michigan in the 1930s. And at school in the Midwest, he seemed to be trying to reach beyond the New York he knew to touch the American heartland he knew so much less about. He even looked for this in his first wife, Mary Slattery, an Irish Catholic from the Midwest. Yeah, we wanted something, each one from the other. She wanted the experience of the... Uh, of the intellectual, the Jew, the artist, and I wanted America, the, uh, the, the something beyond New York. That's part, that's part of what attracted both of us. We were mysteries to each other. During the middle 40s, Miller wrote what he called trunk plays. That's where they wound up, in the trunk. And he had one flop on Broadway. Discouraged, he gave himself one last chance at playwriting and wrote All My Sons in 1947. It was a breakthrough for him, a success. But nothing prepared him for the success of Death of a Salesman and the impact it would have on his personal life and his marriage. The night that it opened. Oh. Well, then I felt with my, with my wife then. That, Mary Slattery. Yes, that we were... It wasn't enough for me, suddenly. I thought I, I had a... Uh, a feeling that we were not close, that we were not one. That you had outgrown her? I had outgrown her. It's know. hard for you to say. Yeah. I hadn't realized until I read the book that you were in psychoanalysis for some time. Yeah. What drove you to do it? My marriage. The fact that I was unhappy. Your and first thought, marriage? Yes. To Mary Slattery? And I thought that that would uh, teach me something that I didn't know about how to live. Well, it really didn't. It just uh, illuminated the fact that I didn't know how to live. And that I could have told you in the first place. The Millers kept their marriage together through the early 50s, a period in which he produced The Crucible, a play about the Salem witch trials. That play opened during the hearings of the House Un-American Activities Committee, and the parallels were striking. A few years later, he heard from the committee himself. They wanted to ask him about some left-wing meetings he had gone to. They right. wanted you to name names. Yeah. And what'd you say to them? I said, look, I'll tell you about me, but I'm not going to tell you about anybody else. Had I thought, put it this way, that somebody I knew was a spy or a working against the United States, that'd be a different story. What are we talking about? We're talking about actors, a few playwrights. Most of them were actors, directors. What earthly effect could these people have on security of the United States or anything else. And they held you in contempt? They voted me in contempt and we appealed it to the Court of Appeals and they threw it all out. Your friend Ilya Kazan named names. Right. You couldn't accept that. No, it seemed to me to be a uh, wrong thing to do. 
Ilya Kazan had been the director of All My Sons and Death of a Salesman. Kazan had been your good friend. Oh, yeah. Collaborate. I loved him. Very close friends. And that simply split it. Yes, it did. How long didn't you speak? I don't know. It's a, it was a number of years. It was during this time that Miller divorced his first wife, Mary, and his impending marriage to Marilyn Monroe became headlines in the tabloids. Miller maintains that his appearance before that committee, in a strange way, had more to do with Marilyn than with the committee's search for communists. Chairman Walter proposed to my lawyer just before the hearing began that if it uh, could be arranged for him to take a photograph with Marilyn, he'd call off the uh, whole thing. The congressman wanted a photograph with Marilyn Monroe. That's with himself? Yes. In the, in the picture. We could have aborted the whole thing in five minutes. And, so and that's why yours. I was. Yeah. And I didn't do it. Their marriage caused a sensation. Arthur Miller moved from the theater pages to the gossip columns. You know that people said at the time that you were together, what in the world is Arthur doing this for? Arthur is, is an innocent. What in the world? No, it was Arthur exactly Miller that, and Marilyn Monroe. That innocence is exactly the point. She also, in a way, was move, moving into a world she knew nothing about. The world of getting up in the morning, making breakfast, and living in a... That was an innocence there. Did she want that, do you think, or...? With part of herself. She wanted it with part of herself, yes. And with the rest? She wanted to be a great star. He wrote about her, I never saw her unhappy in a crowd. Her stardom was her triumph, nothing less. It was her life's achievement. The simple fact, terrible and lethal, was that no space existed between herself and this star. She was Marilyn Monroe, and that was what was killing her. You knew that it was doomed. I didn't know it was doomed, but I certainly felt it had a good chance to be. You said to her, I keep trying to teach myself how to lose you, but I can't learn yet. And she says, why must you lose me? Well, well it just shows you the power of instinct over what's left of your brains at such moments when you're being drawn to someone and you sense that it may not work and you can't stop it anyway. Your face changes when you talk about her. Excuse me? Your face changes when you talk about her. In what way? Well, I think you still... Those were tough years. Terrible. Wonderful years and terrible years. Sure. They were. Well, there was a lot of pain. Certainly for her and certainly for me. Why? Wow, what did it do to you? Well, it's a defeat. It always is. And she was for you quicksand. In a way. Yeah, but you could have lost your way. Matter of fact, well, there are those who I, feel that you did lose your way for five years because of... Well, you could say that, I guess. At the same time, uh, she was a great person to be with a lot of the time. She was full of the most uh, astonishing turns and uh, revelations about people. She was a super sensitive instrument. And that's exciting to be around until it starts to self-destruct. And you and Marilyn were divorced when? Uh, about 61. And you married Inga a year later? Yeah, later, yeah. Today, at the age of 72, Arthur Miller spends most of the time at his house in the Connecticut countryside. He has been married for 25 years now to Inga Marath, a world-class photographer. They have a daughter, Rebecca, who was a promising young actress. He has a small cabin on the property where he still writes every day. Writing every day, right up in that building. Plays? Yeah, I'm writing a play now. Don't ask me why, but I love doing it. 